How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to show you an excerpt from our podcast, episode 33 on muzzleloader load development. And we're going to be talking about just different load development tips. And so before we get started, hit that subscribe button, click the bell to receive notifications, and let's get into it. What do you usually do, Nate? I like to use a lot of forums. You know, I don't like to waste a ton of resources, especially in this day and age. Um, mm. I always kind of look at what other what's worked for other people first. You know, mm. I, I like a lot of forums, and I'm <laughs> I do a ton of internet research. I'm like, okay, well, this powder's mentioned a bunch. This powder's mm. mentioned a bunch. These bullets are mentioned a bunch. These bullets are mentioned a bunch. Yeah, and then I will kind of narrow it down to, okay. I'm, I'm going to try this and this and this and I'm going to shoot five shot groups of each one and kind of based off of that and, and just experience as well of going okay well that seems like might be too much powder or too little and then I kind of narrow it down to the, th the three prospects like like you were saying Only yeah. instead of bringing a bunch of stuff I just narrow it down to what I think is going to work for sure yeah and that's like I say, forums, um, if you give us a call, then we can kind of give you, okay, these two or three powders and these two or three bullets usually work really well out of your muzzle loader. Um, and one thing you want to keep in mind too is different primers are going to respond differently with different yep, powders. So absolutely. If, you're, if you're not able to find a magnum, a magnum primer, we're not going to recommend Blackhorn because you're going to have inconsistent SDs and likely some accuracy issues. Um, so if you're able to find like, you know, let's say triple seven primers we would probably recommend going with like the fire star pellets because they pair extremely well together uh and then you can kind of pick a few other things and kind of work your scientific approach that way but at least you kind of narrow narrow it down a little bit because there's you know 10 or 15 different black powder choices that you could use and 10 or 15 primers and 10 or 15 you know, there's tons of bullets you know yeah so it's good to narrow it down to a few options that you're really that are going to fit your needs that you can kind of work with in your muzzle. Loader. Well, and this year it's more what's available to. I mean, a lot of people um, that weren't prepared mm -hmm. <laughs> and didn't yeah. stock up on stuff. You know, if you haven't been doing the muzzle loader thing for a long time, then what you can get is pretty scarce. And mm -hmm. so building a a load with what you have, I think, is also crucial as well like yeah how can i make this work mm -hmm. and you know sometimes if you've got a bad combination of three things let's say you've just got a bullet that's not working with your gun and you've got some powder that's just not working with your gun and the primer's not working with your gun either now you're kind of in a situation where you might have to drop down to 70 grains of powder to mm -hmm. to make that combination of three things work but if that's what you got to work with and that's what shoots the best i'd rather have a slow load that hits where i'm aiming any day rather than something that's just hopped up and inconsistent yeah because accuracy at the end of the day is the most important thing absolutely um, yeah. ethics know, people people chase velocities a lot but um we actually just recorded a podcast with tony smotherman we kind of talked about this very thing where you know he used the analogy of a, of a pickup truck. Like your pickup truck will drive, you know, a hundred miles an hour, but is it going to handle very well at that, at that speed? You know, it might handle a little bit better at a lower speed, you know, and it's better to be accurate than with a slow load than all over the place mm -hmm. with something that's extremely fast. So, um, there's kind of that happy medium where you want to make sure you're getting as high a velocity as you can without sacrificing the accuracy. And that's why there's so much that goes into this. And that's why you have to do your own load development. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, another thing is, do you have to do load development for each individual muzzle loader? Um, if you haven't determined that from what we've been saying, I would definitely recommend it because every muzzle loader is completely different. Yep. Um, yep. Every muzzle loader, even if you have two of the exact, say you have two traditions pursuit vapor xts you have two of them they're the exact same even if they're even if they're lot numbers or like or, one yeah, apart yeah it's like there's still going to be some minute differences and they'll likely shoot pretty close to the same but it's still always a good idea to um do low development for each one because there could be you never know i mean there could be just some random yeah, i mean things. even even um torque on different bolts that hold the gun together can make a difference in accuracy i mean it's insane mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> there, sure. uh, there are no two rifles that are exactly the same. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So it's definitely something where you, you know, whatever muzzleloader you have, and you can even, a lot of these same principles are going to apply to any center fires that you guys oh, are absolutely. shooting too. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from our muzzleloaders podcast episode on muzzleloader load development. If you want to check out the full episode, click the card above or the links in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.